Hello guys and welcome to Destro Poker. Today we have a special episode. I'm with my friend Positive Poker, who is actually a professional player. It's not like me. I'm I'm just a guy who is playing poker as a hobby. But uh, I'm really excited for today because uh, this is gonna be interesting episode. I'm gonna. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna share our. This is my worst session so far on NL5, and we are going to review it with Positive Poker, and uh, he's far better player than me. So I'm very excited for this. Uh, so Positive Poker, do you want to introduce yourself for the audience? Yeah, sure. I'm I'm retired now, so I'm a fan player too now, <laughs> not professional <laughs> yeah. anymore. But yeah. I was playing poker for a long time, more than 10 years now. And thanks for having me. I'm from Italy, streamed a bit, did some YouTube, some videos and stuff. Now, as I said, a little bit less poker, but still it's fun to review sessions and watch you play. So let's get into it, right? Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's start the footage. So this is my uh, setting here. So we went easier. Um, okay. I hope that's fine. Working all the audio and stuff. Yeah. Um, by the way, in this video I'm talking, so I don't know if you muted it or... I could mute it. That's a good idea. Wait. Yeah. But, so, otherwise it would just oh, maybe overlap. Yeah. It... Let me center the tables maybe. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Should work. Okay. All right. If you if you have something interesting coming up, I'm gonna also put on it. Ace two might yeah folding seems fine. Yeah. So this was the worst session you said, right? Really awful. Yeah. Worst. This is my worst session. I believe I made some mistakes. Uh -huh. There was some variance involved, but overall, the thing is that. When I start, okay, we have kings here. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Just go on. You can keep talking. No, no worries. Uh, yeah. So what I'm usually doing is I have very bad sessions when I lose one or two stacks in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm starting to tilt a bit. Okay. But on this session, I was two stacks in the beginning, but I was feeling very well. I didn't tilt at all. So I just kept going and maybe this was the mistake. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, maybe. One thing I see, okay, with free bet, he's opening 2.5. I'd go maybe a bit, little bit bigger here out of position, just on average. Say a micro stakes, especially people don't like folding, right? So yeah, we might get away. Should be the size like 55? Yeah, something like that. Maybe 50. 50 at least, let's say, because if he, if we think in BB, he goes 2.5, we go 9 now, which seems mm -hmm. a bit small out of position in this, in this spot. So, so small thing, away. but... 10, 11. Yeah, exactly. Let's okay. move on. I cannot just that. Okay. It's, but it's not a huge deal, let's say, it's minor things, just on average. Make it a bit tougher for people if they want to call. Yeah. <laughs> Out of position, yeah. Mm. Okay. What do you think in general? Uh, you got some setups or some bad plays too, maybe? Uh, focus on table two. Don't okay. You, Wait. You see, a, you see the. Let's. Okay. I think I think this is the first bad hand. Okay. Man, I'd like to. Sorry, I'd, I have a really small icon where I can. Click out the zoom, but I, I don't get why it's always shifting. Why is it so small today? Yeah, now I got it finally. Okay, so we free bet, right? I saw that he called. He let he out on bet. the floor. Yeah. Yeah, he dunked, he dunked the flop. Uh, I called. Okay. We free bet, right? We were free betting, yes. Yeah, we were in position three betting and then he dunked. Mm -hmm. So what do you think in general? What does it mean? Uh, 
I don't know this player, to be honest, and mm -hmm. uh, we don't have many hands, so I don't know what is his calling range. It, it can be random stuff. Uh, I expect him to just as a general player on NL5 uh, that uh, we don't know to four bet me with uh, Ace King uh, and then uh, Queen's Pause. Usually, is what they do with the four bets. So, him calling out of position it's a bit tough he has he has maybe king queen but i was thinking i'm blocking king queen so the other option is maybe he has king jack suited or something um also maybe some diamond combos what i noticed is on these takes players like to dunk a lot with uh, forced draws and straight draws mm -hmm. Uh, so I just call this, uh, I, I don't have any problem to call on this flop. Yeah, I, I do agree. My, my thoughts are seeing his stats, he seems reasonable so far to playing tight. It's only 36 hand, but nothing out of line. Second yeah. thing, which pops in my head, once I see him leading here, that makes no sense. Him having a leading range, that tells me he's probably not the best player, just, yeah. uh, I know latching that English not native. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, and, and we have the perfect bluff catcher. I mean, we beat bluffs. We don't beat value, so there's no reason to race. I'd say it's an easy call. Yeah, pretty much the perfect hand to just call. Um. Yeah, we blocked diamonds, which it's not a huge deal, but okay. Flush gets there. We have the ace of diamonds. He leads once more. Yeah, I'm I'm inclined to call one more time because I have the Ace of Diamonds. Yeah, I do agree, for sure. But at uh, this point, I'm in this hand, I'm really confused what what does he have here. Yeah, he's he's wrapping a flush at this point, right? You said you said already well, good analysis on the flop. It's really tough for him to have strong hands here, unless he calls King Queen offsuit pre flop, which. I'm not sure him being tied so far. And then there's just a king queen suited of hearts, so not, almost no combos. Pocket freeze, maybe. Kings and queens should four bet. So on that flop, it's tough for him to have strong hands. Flash gets there, he can have that. Jack 10 of diamonds would make sense. It would be way worse, us not having the ace of diamonds. That would give him a lot more flashes. But this way, maybe Jack 10, 10, 9, 8, 9 of diamonds, stuff like that. Not many combos at this point. King Jack of diamonds, he might have. King 10. River, what do you think about the river? Uh, river looks like a blank to me. Only Jack 10 get. Actually, Jack 10 gets there. Yes, good point. Because I'd say if he has a bluffing range on the flop, which might be Jack 10 and flash draws, Jack yeah. 10 now also gets there, so it's a bit tricky now. Now he checks. This is something, and this is my first mistake in this session. I put him on a king and I try to buff him off. I see wow. the reasoning. We have a good hand to try it. I'm not sure if it's the good player or the right stake. That's what you're thinking, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's close. I, I don't hate it, but I'd say there's easier spots to make money on NL5. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I will, my, my thought process is that if he has a flush, if he has a straight, he's gonna jump the river. Yes, yes, but he checked. So I thought he has a weaker king or something like king 10, king jack. King nine or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that with a jam I could uh, get him off this hand. So basically I bet as a bluff. Yes, I see that, yeah. But <laughs> I don't uh, think this is the play for NO5. <laughs> yeah. And I'd say it's a bit our hand. We might have a tiny bit of showdown value with the queen sometimes. And at that point, it's tough. Usually bluffs are really close, don't make a lot of money. If you look in the solver, bluffs are all really, really 
like he needs to fold that ton of hands to make this a really good bluff because yeah. we need to compare not just the ev of we we need to compare the ev of checking which has a little bit of ev with the queen it's not zero ev just we don't always lose here by checking right yeah the bluff needs to outperform that ev then it's tougher let's say if we had ace 10 with ace of diamonds here so no showdown value and he can mm -hmm. sometimes have pocket jacks randomly playing this way or whatever mm -hmm. let's say it's better with the queen i think it's tough to to have it higher ev than checking behind so um, it's um yeah i i also think that now that i'm working on the hand uh check behind is maybe it's especially having the queen i'd say let's say he played a really random line himself with ace queen or so and then uh, if if we have ace jack we can bluff him out the, the, the thing i don't disagree once he checked river i would put him also on a king sometimes but i'm not sure if it's enough times to 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 this being a good bluff yeah seems always. seems close i don't hate it i don't love it i'd say checking is standard let's see okay he got there the jack 10 offsuit yeah, yeah, he... He, he was not as tight as we saw that's also i already yeah. overestimated his stats jack 10 offsuit what a loose call free flop that's a uh, bad call i actually made an old and tactics green player well done well done yeah the jack 10 should fold pre flop for sure So he gets there and checks river, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is so... Uh... <laughs> he was bluffing, he was bluffing. Okay, yeah, that's... Again, it's a tricky spot. You think in general you bluff too much for these stakes? Or... Yeah, I, I tend to over a bit. I'd but... say... Yeah, go ahead. The thing I found, like, NL2 and NL5 are very different. Mm -hmm. On NL5, I find a lot a lot more capable players. I'm jamming against the small stack. I like to jam, yeah. He seems loose and he has not much left. I think 7th is good enough. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so, I think that a lot of players are, like, capable players, but they tend to overfold. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think I I got I get carried away with buffing. I don't know. I I'm really interesting to understand if I'm I'm winning this way or losing. But so far my strategy seems to be working. So okay. I'd say you have to pick the opponents well. If you pick the right players, you can get away with bluffing. On average, I'd say it's tough because people don't like to... Holding means losing, right? And there's not much money involved. So people on average tend to call too much, I'd say, on micro stakes, then fold too much. But if you pick the right players, some racks might overfold in many spots. So just got to be careful against whom you do it. Mm. Yeah. All right. Pocket tens. Maybe we don't even have to zoom in. Seems maybe people can see it anyways. What do you think? Mm, yes. I think it's a good resolution. It's good enough. Okay, the ace nine. Well, thin value, but nice hand. Yeah. He called down with ace nine. <laughs> yeah, that's how you make yeah, money. I, I was surprised here. Yeah. yeah. He called it. it was yeah. Now look at the top right. Okay, I'd say I'd say Another this mistake. is this is yeah. Before seeing the all in, this I'd say can be a mistake. We free bet, which seems fine. Blind against blind, calling is okay too for solver, but we don't want to think too much about that on NL five. I'd say one thing here. He goes. Let's maybe zoom in to see his sizes and everything. Well. This already gets close against the four bet. What do you think? Because he was huge oh. size, and we have almost no reads. You have reads, maybe. If this if this was a regular player, I would uh, insta fold. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I saw him, the last hand with uh, 
Who the Jack 10? It was the same guy. Yeah, this is the right. same guy. Now I got so, it. Okay. I was like, okay, this uh, this player might be a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. Make, making some mistakes pre-flop. Yeah. So this is why I was more inclined to call. Mm -hmm. But usually if this was, uh, if I didn't see his hand before, I would just fall. Yeah, I, I can understand that. Let's check off. Even let's give him kind of a wide range. Let's say 10%. We're doing, we're doing not as well. It's ace, offshoot is just offshoot and suck and ace check, especially against the value range. Ace check is, is killed, right? Cause he has all the ace king, ace queen, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And we, we pretty much, we need him to four bet hands like king jack, which we dominate. And it's tough to find people doing that. King jack off, queen jack off. We saw him calling the jack 10, which might be an indicator. But then again, it's not an aggressive option he took, right? We didn't see him four betting yeah. the jack 10. Yeah. We just yeah, saw him this, calling. Yeah, this is a different situation. And uh, yeah, it's a little this, bit different. I think this is a mistake from my side here because uh, before he was a passive guy exactly he was tight kind of right that's before. vpip pfr right yeah. yeah yeah 13 13 and now he's going for aggression so mm. they also on average definitely fold with that read it gets a little bit closer but still, I like folding better, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. We called the forward. Now we're in a tricky spot. Yeah, we are. What do you think I... here? I just said when I was streaming wife, okay, bro, let's dance. Okay, then, yeah. You, you think there's no thinking process behind it? I didn't think a lot about this hand, to be honest. Yeah, definitely and a mistake. Definitely a mistake. Mm -hmm. I'd say we need him to jam really wild hands here. Let's say him on king of clubs, jack of spades, stuff like that, which he needs to forebath and then he needs to jam because we don't get great odds, right? Him, him overbetting, we need almost 50%. Yeah. And even if he has a hand, let's say a random hand, jack of clubs as he had before. No, he can't have jack of clubs. Let's say he has jack of spades, ten of hearts. Okay, we're not that, but we are not in the odds yet. Let's say he has a hand like ace of clubs, ten of hearts. Then we're toasted, right? Then against this range, if we give him a reasonable range, I think... So Jamming, jamming this flop is either an overpair without a club or like ace of clubs and the uh, king or ace of clubs and the king and the uh, queen. So really strong uh, club uh -huh. can do this like ace king with ace of uh, club or ace queen with ace of club or king queen with uh, king of club or he has just over pair and uh, destroys us mm -hmm. what? so i don't i don't think here uh, we should call so. yeah, yeah yeah i do agree also one thing i would i would stay away from general assumption this is nl5 i have no clue what he might do this with maybe he does this with king queen of clubs who knows like it's unlikely but i wouldn't say okay Either he has ace of clubs or he has jacks here or queens. He might have, I don't know how people, how he plays or how he thinks about the game, right? Yeah. So I'd rather think about, okay, this he might have a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and then estimate the range and then see how much equity we got. Like, I, I would say maybe he has a random, even a hand like ace of clubs, 10, having a pair and a not flush draw. I have no clue. Like even if yeah. it doesn't make sense to jam a hand like that, he might still do it, right? Because we don't know it's NL5 people. We saw him oh, 
you remember the hand? We we would never expect him to check that Jack 10 on the river before. Why would he do it? Makes no sense. But he did it anyway. So it's also with Jan, we had that in the series where he would just think, okay, this or that. But it's it's really tough unless we get a strong read to know what someone is doing in that situation. So on average, I would just estimate a little bit and then see if we on average have the equity or not. And I would say, yeah, we don't have it here for sure. Yeah. It's an it's a fold, yeah. Even against that's worst case, because he blocks our uh, our outs and this ahead. So yeah, we're just dead pretty much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And also here you see him using the cash out. He he's not a like he's a fun player more or less. Yeah, he should never do that. Paying money to to avoid variant. Right. Yeah, that, that's definitely a mistake. The ace jack. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I was, you know, different. maybe a bit tilted or so. No, I really didn't feel tilted. I was, um, I was exaggerating the read. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, I could see that, yeah. Because I really, I really thought that he can have any, and I don't know. It's you fought bad. any any two cards pretty much. Uh, not any two cards, but I I thought that uh, he definitely have bluffs. Give give him a hand. Give him a bluff hand. What do you think? Like, I I'd say so too. He can have bluffs, but what hands exactly do you think about? Straight rolls. Yeah, which which hands are there? Uh what was the flop? Wait, we can ten, we can go back. Ten eight. Ten eight uh three. Where is it? Here it is. Oh what so nine jack? But he won't forbet nine jack. Exactly, so, yeah. We have to think yeah. what happened. Yes. Yeah. He won't for for bet one uh nine jack. Uh, so basically, he has like he he had a bluff to be honest. He had a bluff. Yes, he's king, but yes. this bluff is crushing us. Yes, yes, that's the thing we want to come at. The thing yeah. would be he would need to have a hand. Let's say ace eight offshoot. No, ace nine. Ace eight is pair even. Ace nine offshoot with ace of clubs. Yeah, that's good. That could yeah. be one of the few. But you realize that's quite crazy to find, and he still has the ace king ace queen, which might be in there. But we need to find more of those than the ace king ace queen, which he will always play this way. Maybe ace queen, not even, but ace king for sure. And that gets tough. One, I would say maybe might be in there king queen with one club. But even that, we saw him call the jack 10 off before. I'm not sure if he would ever pour bet and then over bet jam. So, yeah. Because often, often in our head, okay, he might be doing random stuff. He might be bluffing here. But then thinking about specific hands, which hand can he play this way? It's tough. And once that gets tough, then our process is not on point, right? Yeah, I think the problem with this hand was I... I was like, this guy did this with Jack 10 offsuit. Yes. I think he's a crazy player. He doesn't know what he's doing. Yes. And I I didn't give enough thought. And this is one of my problems that uh, against fun players, I don't think enough. Sometimes I just uh, assume that they're doing some something crazy. Yes. And, and I don't give it enough thought. So this is one of perfect example that I'm not beating anything. I agree. Yeah. And, it... I, I, and I make a call for the whole stack. So, yeah. yeah. It's money we can save. It would be different. Let's say the last, last hand with Jack 10, he would have jammed flop with the Jack 10 or so. Then I do agree. Then he did something yeah. crazy. Then he, we saw him doing that. But we before we saw him call twice with a weak draw. No, he let out, right? He did. He took he a. He dunked. 
Yeah, he donked. It wasn't that passive. So so in kind of he might do, but he didn't jam it. Oh, yeah. Actually, that makes it a bit better. Him taking uh, an aggressive line there. It's better than if you would have called the deck 10 twice before. But still, I'd say it's marginal, yeah. We need the Ace of Clubs pretty, no pretty much. That's what we need yeah. to call it off. Then it's fine. Jack is a bit too weak. Yeah, just a bad spot to put. Yes, in. yes. There's better spots on, on micro stakes for sure. Mm. But what does green mean? Is he a fun player? Fun player. So, okay. Uh, I, I keep it very simple. Uh, green players are fun players and uh, red players are regulars. You, you have a specific read? Does that seem okay? It's reasonable? 400 hands? Uh, this guy likes to limp a lot. Okay, really? Mm. Yeah, so we have a lot of hands with him, but I probably saw some... Some random stuff in there. Random stuff in mm. there. And so he, he likes... Okay, he calls, yeah, seems standard. We hit a good flop. Yeah... I don't mind it. Maybe we could size a bit smaller. We get it in anyways, but seems fine. On the flop, I mean. Like there's no draws and stuff on A6X. Maybe we can bet half or a little bit smaller even than yeah. two thirds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's actually a good point because I, I don't really think about sizing. So yeah. Much. Think about sizing. Also in that spot, for example, because... If we want to get the money in, we can also get it in by betting half, then the turn a little bit. You realize we don't need to blow the pot immediately because there's no draws. Yeah. We don't. We might not want to scare him away. I'd like half or a little bit smaller even. One third might be fine too. But it's not. It's not a huge deal. Let's say. Is King shoot it? Hmm. By the way, we're using my layout now with all the ads. You should put your ads here top under my <laughs> under my face. <laughs> oh, <it's not. laughs> uh, by the way, nines. I just called. Usually, I I'm gonna probably. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Okay, nines. Seems I fine. Am... Yeah. Sometimes I'm gonna three bet, but this player, this his stats is like. Just seven PFR, so mm -hmm. yeah. I then just don't think it's good to three bet there. Yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes the sample might be a bit small, but uh, I'd say it's an indicator, and that's a good point. On average, on micro stakes, we want to avoid rakes, right? So on on stars, we don't pay pre flop rake. So this makes us want to three bet more than than uh, call because we avoid mm -hmm. the rake, right? Mm -hmm. Um, by him falling and sometimes taking it down, but against this guy, I don't. I, I like calling. Okay, what's the thinking process here? I can take the hand here. You, you want to bluff basically? Just take yes. it down. Take it down here. If they don't have an ace, they, for sure. It, it's, it's. Just one and done situation. Okay. I'd say our hand is a bit wasted almost to bluff, right? We beat a few hands. It's almost we could use King Queen or something to bluff. Hmm. And three ways, I'm not sure if it's that great because it's really likely someone can have an ace. Yeah. So, heads up, I would agree if we had a read, he's giving up. But three ways seems a bit close. I don't hate it, but it seems close, especially our hand, which can have a little bit of EV checking down. Now I do something stupid. Yeah, now it connects a bit. Now basically we're targeting the higher pairs, right? Some ASX, weak ASX. The thing I, when I was playing this hand, uh, he took a lot of time calling. That's a good indicator, yeah, that he's in between there. So he's hesitating already. 
either to go, but maybe he's hesitating to race or go. So, mm -hmm. but usually when I see somebody take a lot of time, I usually double bottle because usually this is a sign of a weakness mm -hmm. in mo most of the cases. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the reason I double bottle. Also, we have a good show. Yeah. I, I like the fact that we pick up equity, that's better. Let's say turn was a free of something. I would then then I'd say it's definitely a mistake because we don't pick up anything. On this one, if he has Jack stands and he wants to call again, at least we have more out, so I don't mind it now. Yeah. I don't think it's super bad or so. And now I would say we wanna give up. I don't would I wouldn't try to bluff people off of Ace X here. Let's I see. Hope I, gave up. I hope I gave up. I think I gave up. Yeah, yeah, he has the ace. I mean, I'd say flop is a mistake three ways. I would just try to check it down. Our hand has some showdown yeah. value. If they got nothing, we're ahead right now, right? Yeah. The only thing which we could try, let's say they have nothing, nothing, then we could bet smaller. Or not. If they have give ups, they would fold anyways. So we don't have to yeah. risk too much. Yeah. I'll Maybe one third. Can, we can try with 30% there. Yeah. And our hand yeah. might benefit, but could because they might call even worse hands against that. Big blind might have an eight or five and call against one third. Yeah. So, so betting large our hand turns it into a bluff where it's not necessary, in my opinion. Yeah, I think this is one of my mistakes is that I have some showdown, but mm -hmm. I tend to turn the hand into a bluff when it's not really necessary. So I think we we are onto something here. Yeah, too too much aggression maybe at some point. Where it's not mandatory. I like the jacks, seems fine, big size, I like it on that flop. A lot of draws, a lot of hands which can call. Okay, we get raised. Ace Queen seems a call. I like that too. Yeah, bad, bad flop for the Ace Queen. Let's maybe skip, or do we focus on the Jacks? That's more interesting, I'd say. Ace Queen, we give up. We we can see it later what happens. But this one is interesting. So she check raised flop. I like the call. I don't think we want a free bet flop. He seems reasonable so far from the stats. Turn, what do you think? Uh, he check raised. Mm -hmm. So this makes it a bit complicated. What can we have in the check raise range? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he can do it with a uh, first draw. Maybe he can do it with a uh, straight draw. But I'm, I'm blocking the straight. Mm -hmm. So now if he checks maybe it it is better option to bet small but i i don't remember what i'd say it's fine you you made a good analysis on the flop he check raised so he has a value range which might be pocket three sevens maybe nines if he doesn't free bet so sets basically maybe yeah, he all the sets. yeah all the sets maybe he does it with ace nine king nine sometimes and a lot of draws, flash draws, gathers. The eight connects a bit, which is, it's not a great turn. Let's say a three would be better or a seven, a nine, not really if you can have ace nine, king nine, but it's not a brick. So yeah, some, some five, six gets there, which he might have that a double gather on the flop. Four and the eight makes a straight. Uh, let's see what he does. So this is a bit, I'd say this is a turn we want to be careful. But Jax is a good hand, as you said. He has let, less Jack 10, so it's better. And we have a gutter if he has a set. So Jax is better than aces here, in reality. Because he should never have the kings, queens in between. And this way we have at least a gutter and block his straights. So if he bets huge here on the turn, it's better to call Jax than aces, let's say. Which might be a bit counterintuitive. Okay, checks. I'd say it's close in EV. We can bet, we can check. Betting large, it's it's fine in my opinion. You can go smaller. On this river, I would just check back and take showdown. Also, now yeah. it's one 
one card straight out there. Yeah, I like it. He had the S9 well played, I'd say. Nice hand. Mm, because he checked the turn, I basically said it's impossible for him to have a set. He would always bet a set. On the, yeah, that's a good assumption. Yeah, I'd say he so. Wants to, he wants to get stuck. Yeah, yeah. On average, I would agree. Yes. So this is why I decided to take. Maybe. Yeah, we were happy to see him check on the turn for sure. Okay, uh, this one got interesting anyway. So we called the free bet. He see that's really small. Okay, against that size, we might have to call. Just he bet bigger, definitely fold. Now, what happens now? The jack uh, uh, changes things a bit. Why? The jack... Well, he can have jacks first. Mm -hmm. And the way he played, it looks like jacks, actually. Uh -huh. I would think first about our hand. What does it change? On the flop, we had nothing. Now, what do we have? We have a good shot, but... Not just not that? Good. Look at it. Ah, double. Uh, it's a double gutter, the nine or the uh, king. Yes. Uh, we got and... some equity, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking a lot about this hand, but I'm not going to spoil. Let's okay. See. Yeah, against the overbet jam, we never have the odds, I'd say. It's an easy fold still. Because uh, we get such a bad price. Let's say we have the double gather outs. Then how many outs do we have? Eight, right? Eight. eight That's 18%, eight. but we need almost 45%. Yeah, it's not enough. Unless he has a ton of king queen, even if he odds all king queen, it's not enough. Just if he bets one dollar, we can call for our double gather. Once he jams, it's just an easy fold. Yeah, I was thinking a lot because I couldn't put him on a hand. I was trying to think about this. Yeah, it looks a lot like king queen of clubs, ace queen of clubs, a lot of equity maybe, but we don't know again. Maybe he plays kings this way, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. We don't care. We we never have the odds with face queen. Mm. The random line, as you said. Ooh, what's six nine here? What is going on? This is my favorite hand. <laughs> oh, you play it every time. <laughs> yes. What the fuck, really? <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, we will, we will let you that one. <laughs> not, not how how you should approach it, but it's fine. <laughs> I play it everywhere. I sometimes go three bet with it. <laughs> what so, the heck? Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this uh, you should you should let me have this, please. <laughs> okay, people who play against you should not know because they might uh, they might, <laughs> yeah. they might pick it up. Okay, that's why I uh, thought. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm I'm it, sitting out to take a break here. Okay, that's good. So you can throw risky. One thing to add: we we should not do that, right? In reality, we should think about not not about ranges and what makes the most money. But yeah. if you want to do it for fun, who cares? <laughs> Just for people to know, in EV, it's not gonna help. <laughs> At least it's not seven deuce offsuit, which is your favorite yeah. hand. <laughs> it has a bit more EV than the. Yeah. <laughs> Not the worst hand to say. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we skip a bit, maybe? Yeah, I think we should skip a bit. Uh, yes. I went for a break here. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe. How much are we down right now? Two stacks, maybe? Mm. Not even. Two, two stacks we lost, but then we had some winning. Hits. Yeah, so it's not as bad. Yeah, it's not. I don't remember what happened, how I lost five stacks here. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. I like the bluff with 5 9. Turn might get close. He's a fun player. Maybe he doesn't like to fall. Yeah, now we just give up. Seems okay. Seems okay. Jack 7. A lot of equity for us. 5 8, I might complete it suited in the small blind here. Mm hmm. But we, we need to be careful post-flop. But him, him, he's just playing every hand. We might have a big edge post-flop as well. 
out of position it sucks, but still 5 8 2 that I would call. Um, Basically, what I do from the small point is uh, just 3 better fold. Mm -hmm. I very rarely complete. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I see some fun players, maybe I'm going to complete, but. Yeah, you, you saw the button open limped, right? You saw that? Ah, he limped? Yes, button limped, that's why. Otherwise, uh, never. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't see that. Yeah, it was. Let me show you. He limped. That's uh, why we get okay, a okay. great prize. Yeah, we can complete here. Yeah, I would complete. Ooh, let's see the. Okay, the Jack 7 is already gone. He pots again. Let's see what happens. I would still call. Yes. And we don't get there and then fold. Seems fine. What did he have? Sorry. I didn't. Jacks. Okay. Mm. Yeah, let's skip a bit. We're already at 41 minutes. <laughs> It's not as bad so far. I'd say some plays were a bit aggro, yeah, as you said. What's your win rate right now? Do you have a big sample or? Uh, I have like 30k hands on Nano 5. And okay. I think the win rate is about 5. Wow, it's not bad. On Nano 2, I had 15. Ooh, ooh nice. So I was expecting to have a lot more on Nano 5, but. It's still a small sample, and the NL5 is going to be a lot lot tougher, in my opinion, than NL2. In, when I played the Road to Vegas challenge, NL5 was even sometimes tougher than NL10. Because you have more fun players liking to play those even blinds, the 10 cent blinds, yeah. rather than yeah. two, five, two cents, five cents. And sometimes on NR5, you had to have a ton of regulars trying to move up from lower stakes, doing it from the bottom. So, yeah. But still, there's some fun players around here. So it should be beatable for sure. I'm surprised you tag all these people as green. They seem reasonable. Okay, no, this was the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I don't know, maybe I saw something, uh -huh. I really don't remember. But for, for, for example, this guy with the Jack-10 and the hands before we face King, I would put him somewhere in between, like not a whale, but doing some random stuff. You, you don't have in between, right? You have red and green. Yeah, uh, maybe I should make some. Maybe yellow or something, like he knows to fold three flops sometimes and stuff. That's different than someone a uh, huge whale, right? Limping every hand. Yeah. Like the difference between Mick here and Neil Pam is huge. He's li open limping every hand, so maybe you can adjust that a little bit to have more yeah. infos in that direction. Um, is Jack? We have 17 minutes left. Let's see what happens. <laughs> We're waiting for the big spots now. Something is gonna happen. I Something needs to happen. <laughs> okay, eight against Neil. That's our nemesis today. Wait, now I'm lost. What happened? So we see that you always use two thirds. I saw now, right? Almost always. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, thirty percent, but rare. Okay. I, I don't mind it. I like the fold. Everything gets there. We bet big flop, so you shouldn't call all. King seven might be a bit close. Wait. Okay, it's blind against blind. No, then it's fine. Maybe we can consider free betting king seven offsuit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, sometimes I three bet this. Mm. I'd say people sometimes open too wide in the small blind and then they don't defend enough. So any two might be reasonable against some people. And we don't want to pick any two, but King7 seems a decent hand to free bet a lot, yeah. Sometimes I forget it in game playing too passive in those spots. 
I would be suspicious him checking on ace five flop here as a pre flop aggressor. I, I would not check fast. He checked really fast. I didn't notice it. Yeah, that I could mean so. he gives up. Yeah, timing tells can matter I'm here. Sure. I'm not sure. Let's see. It's also we have it on two times speed now. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Mm, okay. No, no, no. He didn't check fast. Yeah. No, no, no. Be aware. Okay. I don't know. Be aware. Think about okay. What's usually spots where people see that? Where do they check on average? And I'd say on Ace Nine Five, people know they can see that sometimes. Maybe they should still check a lot of hands in theory, but back in the day, this would be a spot always see that once and then see. So once he checks, it's different. Let's say flop is six five three with a flush draw. Then I would expect him to check a lot and give up a lot. Yeah, I expect him, if he has something here, or even with bluffs, mm -hmm. he's going to see bet. This is what, maybe the perfect for to see bet. Yes. So, so once, yeah. Once he doesn't see bet, it gets a little bit tricky. It's either his low place or he has nothing. So... But didn't we see say if he had nothing a bluff he would just see that? Oh yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. Yeah, it's now it makes sense. I'd say once he checks, he has a usually people have a medium capped range. It's a lot of mm -hmm. 9x, a lot of pocket tens checks, which don't want to see that because it doesn't make too much sense. Some weak case X. Basically, they have some showdown value, but it's not a super strong hand. So if we if we start bluffing, I'd say we have to go a few streets. But I'm not sure if he's willing the guy to fold. If he has jacks now, he's gonna call one. And then uh, we need to keep betting turn and river maybe to to make him Here. fold. Here hey. I bet small. Okay, you bet small, yeah. Now we pick up a gather. I'd say we need to go for it now. Yeah, now we, we hope basically that he folds 10s, queens, 9x, stuff yeah. like that. Okay, yeah, then I like it. But on average, be aware on the flop, people have something. Yeah, they are not full of shit, I'd say. Yeah. Especially on those flops. It would have been worse us stabbing one on the flop and then giving up, because uh, usually it's a face-up middle range, which we can get, a, get out there sometime. Later streets. Okay, still nothing. Six nine. <laughs> Let's see, six nine through that. That's something happening now. Okay. Ah, the six nine. Now I get it. Why are you laughing, man? What the heck? <laughs> and you flop trips either. <laughs> Holy crap, six nine. Go for it. <laughs> Oh, you see. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, not gonna spoil this one. Man, that's a nice flop for 6 9 and turn yeah. even better. I would, I like checking. I like checking. Oh, he has aces. <laughs> now I know why he lost and got tilted. Mm, yeah, what can you do? Yeah, ship it in if he has aces, GG. Maybe he has king queen of hearts. Who knows? Who knows? Ace nine even. Wow. He got you dominated. Free flop. He knew. He crushed me. <laughs> Holy crap. Ace nine. GG. I think, I think I'm going to play, uh, stop playing this hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he has a read on you. You're playing every nine six. He knew. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. No, don't. Yeah. You're losing EV with the six nine. Just fold yeah. it. <laughs> man. Go go be yeah. I you can do it for fun if it it's not a big deal. Um freeze might be close in that position. You can open, you can fold. If players are tight after I'd say we can open. Big blind needs to seems to be a bit active, so I'd fold rather in this spot. Freeze, open maybe sixes plus. Top left here. Cause 
think about okay we play a default range then we want to deviate okay can we open looser do we need to open tighter i would say the first things we want to look at is cutoff loose and aggro button loose and aggro then we want to play way tighter because these are going to be the guys putting us in tough spots always having position on us if they are tight we can open looser if blinds also fall a lot and go for a wide range Big blind seems yeah. a bit active here. He's not the guy yeah. to fold a lot. But yeah, I think this situation is not very good to open. Yeah, I'd say it's thin. If if he was also tight, I'd say if he was on the button, it was a bad open for sure, because he's gonna free with us a lot and make our life tough. Him in the big blind, it's not as bad, but he's gonna defend a lot still. It's not a great open, as he said. I would just fold pre-flop. Deep at once and give up. Uh, I like it. Unless maybe a five on the turn, picking up some equity. Or a three making a set, obviously. Do you do that? Just already thinking ahead. That's something I'd say really important also for higher stakes then. Make a play on the flop and think about, okay, what do I do on this turn? What happens on this run out, right? Uh, I start to think when the card, when the card okay that's something I, I, yeah uh sometimes i have uh, i have a feeling if i'm gonna double battle uh, -huh. uh on it on specific card mm -hmm. but usually i start to think about it when the turn that, that's something i guess it's coming with experience a lot where we already okay we have a plan in our head where we think okay I'm c betting once now. If he folds, it's fine. We take it down. If he calls, I'm giving up on all turns unless it's a five or a three. Okay. That yeah. makes, that takes off a lot of mental energy every time thinking again. Yeah. As a default uh, game plan, but that's going to come with time. It's also a lot of experience. Sometimes after playing 10 years, I'm in a different spot and I don't, I have less stuff to think for me in a different direction. Okay. Oh yeah, the nine six was painful. Now we lost a big pot there. Yeah, one well stuck there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jack, to be honest, no. I, I thought I'm this game again. Please, didn't hear you. Uh, to be honest, with the six nine, I thought I was winning. Yeah, sure. So You're always yes. winning, more or less. <laughs> yeah, sure. I understand that. Penguin suited might be a spot we could think about for the bluffing with the right opponents. It's it's a decent hand. We block kings and queens, yeah. ace king. And people yeah. might just randomly three bet the st standard range and fold too much against four bets. I would yeah. sometimes click into his stats and see how much does he fold to four bet if you have that, and then uh, decide on that. The button open, small blind three bet. Usually that's wide ranges, so we can try. Yeah, makes sense. Basically, he thinks, okay, button steals. Small blind thinks I re steal. And we're the third guy thinking I re re steal, right? <laughs> yeah, Being yeah. smarter than the other guys. That's usually the situation happening. Sometimes I do it, but mm -hmm. not very often. Yeah, also, it needs to be the right guys. They don't, uh, they, they need to be loose enough, pre betting enough hands. King seven seems a bit loose against a big three bet. Uh, he, this guy, we have a dynamic. Okay. He's, he's three betting very well. He's three betting a lot. Like twelve percent. Okay. So I tend to go wider against him when I'm in position. Mm hmm. I like if that. Out of position, I'm going to fold this for sure. Yes. Uh, in position, I like to play with this guy. I, I like that adjustment, thinking about what he does and then adjusting. One thing I would keep into consideration here, I'd say maybe we want to afford that more instead of calling because the rake is high, right? Yeah. And King 7 suited is even a, it's a marginal hand calling on higher stakes. If we know he's full of shit here, 
just for that and hopefully take it down. Maybe he calls sometimes. Stack sizes are a bit awkward here in a sense that we're almost committed. So we need to make it 120. And if we, he jams, he has, we have to fold. Yeah. So we can't go 140 or 150, then we're committed almost. That sucks. But yeah. if you think he free bets a ton too much, just go for 120 and make we have a king blocker. If he calls, we have some playability. I'd say calling is okay, but with the high rake, it's tough to make, to have such an edge to make up for also the rake, right? Yeah. And, and by four betting, we avoid the rake. Yeah. Okay, now we hit the flop. Falling seems fine. We check turn. I like betting or checking. I'd say our hand is fine check too. Is it tough to get two streets and we're only an ace sucks for us? Maybe a queen jack, but still. And it would really suck if he jams, right? After we bet. Betting is fine too, but our hand seems seems like a solid check back. Now I like it. He had one above, unfortunately. <laughs> Man. You see what I mean with this guy? We have some dynamics with him. <laughs> yeah. King eight two, that small one. Yeah. Seem, seem, it's not crazy out of line. Seems a bit loose, maybe. I'm not even sure what solver would exactly. I'd say this is a sizing thing here. Okay, he free bet small blind. He's quite crazy, it doesn't matter. Yeah, this. Yeah, he seems so quite aggro on so far. It's not a huge sample still. I'd say we want to think about our sizing pre flop here. If we go 145. It's yeah, almost commit. committing, yeah. You said it, right? Committed. Yeah, so, this is what I was thinking too. So on gen on average, we want to make his life not too easy. This way we're almost telling him, okay, if you jam, we're never folding, right? We can we can't bluff almost like this size. Yeah. If we would bluff, we can go 120, 125. It's mm -hmm. cheaper for us. So I would go with this hand also a bit smaller, maybe. Mm -hmm. Just one do thing think against do you, do you think against this guy we are ever folding? Uh probably not, no. But he might think that, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say he has a pure bluff here. And he sees us making it 145. If he still jams it all in, that's super <laughs> dumb by him. If we make it 120, he might still think with ace five two that maybe maybe he folds still. I can jam all in, right? Yeah, yeah it makes sense. And this way we tell him we're never folding. We just have 355 left. Put in 145. So yeah. especially even if, the thing is with jacks, it's a bit nice to go bigger because if he ever calls, we we give him a worse price. If we had aces, that wouldn't care. Because aces just want him to call. Let's say he has king queen and we make it 120 with jacks and he calls against 120, right? Maybe I'm a bit too fast. Tell me if, if you can't follow my thinking. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm forward. If, if we had aces, we want him to call. So 120 is fine. We don't care if he has king queen. But if we have jacks and he has king queen, we don't want him to call because he has out still against jacks, right? Yeah. So, so that's the only benefit for us going bigger with jacks. Yeah. But I'd say in general, just go smaller and make his his life tougher. I would go 120. 120. Okay. To to give him an impression, maybe we can fold. Maybe. We will never in reality, but he doesn't. Ooh, the king queen. What the fuck? He still jams it in. Okay. Yeah. Then all my talking was for nothing because exactly a hand like that, I would expect if he thinks a little bit about it, I would expect him to to give up because he knows we are never falling. At least he should know. Yeah. He still jams it in, man. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> and he gets there. All right, GG. Yeah, he's he's definitely good. Good note on him. He's he's against this guy. You have to go broke with face queen pre flop and stuff. Yeah. Yeah with a wider range. So that's why I got four stacks. Yeah, now we're getting close. Yeah. Maybe four or three stacks down. The 9-6 suited, this one was unlucky. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Seven minutes left in the footage. I think the wasp hands are basically the wasp two stacks are basically on the same time. Okay. If I if I remember correctly. Kings. But Again, I, I would go a bit bigger here with kings also. Mm. Go a bit bigger, makes their life tougher. We don't want to get into a spot out of position, allowing him to call a lot of fans. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna just that. Yeah. Then the bedding seems fine. Sizing seems fine too. What do you think about the turn? Is it a good card or not that good? Uh, I think this guy is gonna four bet me with queens. Okay, even in these positions, so I think it's a good card because he has a water face queen. Mm. That's yeah. If you know he's always four betting queens, then it's a good card. If we don't I know, it's I, not as good. Yeah. I think against me, he's gonna four bet queens. Okay. Keep in mind, it's UTG against big blinds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then, then, then it's a good card if he has all the ace queen in there. River sucks. Uh, yeah, river sucks. Everything, everything gets there. Even eight nine suited jacks. What else? I don't, I don't remember what I did. The ace queen, he could still call down. But also the thing is here, our perceived range, so the range he thinks we might have, gets so strong here because all the ace king get there, right? Yeah. And that's a huge impact in my opinion, which changes his calling range. I would say it's even tough to value that here to jam river. Like what is he gonna call down with only ace queen pretty much? I think I check all, but I, mean... I I like to check, yeah. I like to check. And I fear that it's gonna be a check fold. What do you think? It sounds tough. Because yeah. because we have an over pair in a in a big pot now. But what yeah. could he be bluffing? That's the thing. Let's see what he did. Uh, what he did. Okay, maybe it gets easy. Now I'm thinking I had to wipe. Check back. I don't. Oh. Another example, yeah. Ace Queen. I would expect to check back now. What yes, do you think? Yes, yes, yes. Ace Queen is gonna check back. Yes, on that run out. So now, once he jams, we only beat bluffs, right? Yes. What could he be bluffing? Nines. Okay, nines. Probably. You think he's calling turn? We bet large turn. Oh. Uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. tough. It's yeah. tough for him to find a bluff, I'd say. Yeah, it's tough. Because we bet flop. Okay, nines, definitely in there. Now, in my opinion, it gets close for him calling a dollar here with nines. Not sure if he would do that. Maybe he still will. But I'd say it's not a good call for him on a turn if he does it. I don't remember. I did I fold? Did I call? If you fold, it's a it's a really well played in my opinion. Not an easy fold because if we just look at the hand, we think, man, it's kings on that run out. It's a strong hand. But if yeah, we I think did. about ranges, about what he did, what we did, it's getting tough in my opinion. Yeah, I don't remember. I think I called. Yeah, it's I I don't. It's not the call to be guilty of because it's a tough fold to make, in my opinion. Yeah, I had tens, okay. I'd say if you play A game really focused, you would find a fold there. But in game, it's it's tough. Yeah. Mm. Let's see the last few hands. But just thinking about it now, if you think, what could he be bluffing? Like, there's yeah, almost no bluffs there's left. Almost no bluffs. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe I was not in my A game anymore in this in this spot. Could be, but also it's not an easy. It's an over pair in a three bad pot, so it's this is not an easy fold to find. Okay, I think with with the kings mm -hmm. was another can. Maybe that was it. During the time with the kings. Yeah, probably it was it. 
five stacks. Did we miss some big hands? We see the big ones here, right? Kings, we saw jacks. That was against King Queen, right? Yeah. Nah, yeah. Nine six, the ace jack. Yeah. I'd say we could have saved some money, but not all of it. Maybe ten dollars or so. Yeah, the first two hands are a bit questionable, then the others are close, I think. I don't know. The ace queen bluff, I'd say, is close, yeah. I would yeah. give up yeah, on that one. The ace yeah. jack definitely mistake. Those three dollars seventy. Nine six, <laughs> that's your nine six play free bluff. <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> um jacks was unlucky that was well played and kings is a tough one to find a fault there i will not uh, give you that one like not uh how do you say <laughs> put you put that on your side yeah well this was a very i was uh, surprised actually because uh usually when i was uh like like in this session i was two stacks in the beginning Mm -hmm. And usually I get tilted and I stop, mm -hmm. but I was, I don't know, I was not tilted at all. No, it didn't seem like that. No, not at all. Yeah, I just kept playing. Uh, I thought I'm going to take these stacks back and uh, I just kept playing. Uh, I wasn't tilted, but just the shit situation kept <laughs> kept happening. Yeah. S some spots to avoid. Some stuff to improve, maybe sizing sometimes, why we pick certain sizings, why maybe others. But that's really advanced stuff. You will get there with experience, playing a bit. Yeah. It's not like sometimes I'm thinking from ahead, playing 10 years and stuff. Uh, so at some points you see, see, see those uh, factors, but it's a long road. There's a lot of strategy involved. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, it was fun. <laughs> Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed it. I yeah. really hope that maybe someday when you are bored, we yeah. can do this again. <laughs> Let's see in a few months. I'd yeah, say maybe when you start to miss poker a bit. Yeah, exactly. I'd say big point is the sizing. Big point, be aware about aggression. Sometimes it was maybe a bit too much in certain spots. Mm. It's good. You can run people over sometimes if you pick the spots well. But you need to pick the spots well. That's the important point. <laughs> then the win rate will really crush, I'd say. Exactly, exactly. But you're definitely the most of the strategy is on point. I, I can see why you crushed Anna too, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some small yeah. stuff to improve and you're you can reach higher stakes for sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot for this uh, coaching session. It was it was a great pleasure for me to see a perspective from you and uh, yeah, definitely uh, one thing I'm going to take a note from this is sizing, especially on the three bets or mm -hmm. four bets. I'm going to pay more attention there and uh, I'm going to think more about the aggression spots. Yeah. Thanks for having me again. It's just having a different perspective. And that doesn't mean that everything I said is perfectly on point. It's good to have different ideas. Also, people in comments might have ideas on spots which I might miss. So it's always good to have a discussion and talk about it. Yeah. yeah. That's why I, I encourage people, guys, join Discords. Uh, Positive Poker has a great Discord. Uh, I'm going to leave the, in the description his Discord and his YouTube. So you can check him. Uh, join the discords, uh, make discussions. It's very important to improve. Even if you're like, I'm a hobby player. I'm not full-time player, but uh, in these tough times, like right now, poker is not very easy. You need to improve all the time. So it helps a lot when you have uh, more people to discuss it with. I also have a discord. I'm trying to build a community. So I'm going to leave my discord. That's awesome. Yeah, perfect ending. Thank you for watching, everyone, and see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.